in the plan that you have a three mile jurisdiction, then you could forcibly annex a business like Agco or Hubbard Feeds or the Co-op or Ackerman or McHenry, all businesses who do not want to be part of the city of Beloit because they're afraid of their tax dollars going up and they don't want to have to charge an extra 1% sales tax. That's one of the reasons we do business with Ackerman because we have 1% less sales tax. And it wouldn't be very nice to be taking those tax dollars away from the county. I, I spoke with Glenn at the Planning Commission meeting on September 9th about this voluntary and involuntary and he said the laws have changed quite a bit over the years and it really wouldn't be a good idea for the city to try to force annexation and at that point I asked the Planning Commission well please take this out of the plan but they did not so that is what I think the real meaning of this is all about and we are very frightened that Agco would pull up stakes and leave Beloit and this town would be a whole different place Ron Harris is my neighbor I've talked to him twice and he says Agco is adamantly opposed to any kind of zoning at all out there now, if they're opposed to it, they're not going to take it. It's not going to take much for a multinational corporation to pull up stakes, go someplace else, where they're not going to be zoned or regulated. And I spoke to Ron, and I told him that we wanted him to join forces with us, and he said that he will not bring his attorneys in until the city tries to force him to be annexed in. I've also I spoken. Anybody who's ever said yeah. we've been interested in annexing in. Words in our yeah, we, no, we're no, not. No. I'm just telling annex. you when I invest. Why do we want to bring in annex people who don't want to be in? That would be a. Why are the words there, in the plan? No you could take the words out. Excuse you could me. take the words out. We're not looking to annex those people. We're not looking to annex anybody. If they don't want to come in, there's no reason for us to fight them to try to bring them in. If they want to come in voluntarily, we would more than happily bring them in. But there's no benefit to us to try to forcibly annex Agco, huge corporation. We want them here. If people want to come in voluntarily, we'd be more than happy because we're providing them services anyway. But we'd like to have them in, sure. But we're, I don't, I haven't heard anybody say we need to sit down and really talk about bringing uh, annex and well, people in. We've talked about zoning. We've never talked it's about It's in the plan. It says to use involuntary annexation. Yeah, and I asked them to take it out. It's been there since the original. Plan. They, didn't change, they didn't change the language from the original, so they just left it from the back. But you guys can take it out. Right. They, the they, yeah, they could. They well, the problem is also they'll now be zoned, and they don't want to be zoned or regulated or any more control over them at all. And that's that's part of the issue. I don't want to be either, Dave, but that's too bad. Well. Some fly ain't going nowhere, trust me. <laughs> They're a multinational <coughs> corporation. You know, I, I want to say one thing. I don't understand why anybody that lives in the city of Boyd is opposed to somebody being annexed. Do you know how many thousands of dollars in taxes you're paying because they're not paying any? Oh, absolutely. I yeah. moved from Lawrence yeah. and I had a $160,000 I mean, home and I was paying $1,200 a year taxes on that. My mom's house is $155,000. She's paying $3,200 in taxes on that. And I'm not advocating annex like Tom said. We're, we're not advocating annex anybody. That's not, that's the first well, thing. Well, then please take the language out of the plan then, the involuntary annexation in the plan. Or so zoning. I, I haven't even read through it, so I don't know what's... But I think that would ease some minds, but he's also right. They do not want to be zoned either. We don't want people... But this want... attorney's lining up, just in case the city does that, because I've been speaking to the businesses. They'll make a well, for the record, we we provided a lot of services to Agco. They're good for our community. They we are great. They are here. great for the our, community. Our community is good for Agco, and you know, that, it, right. I agree. You know, we I not agree. doing anything to run them off. We're not lining up attorneys to do business with Agco. Not our intent. The Planning Commission has, you know, what they're trying to do is what's best for our whole community, with inside, outside the city, to protect us. We're trying to grow. Some people don't think we're growing. We're growing. If you look at what was presented tonight, we're trying to keep our community moving forward, which will benefit everyone in here, every business in town, everyone. And as, as we grow our tax base, as, as these buildings come on our tax rolls, hopefully, eventually, it will lessen the tax on everybody. And then down the road, we hope that uh, 
you know, it'll encourage more people to continue to build in our community. And, and if, if you look around us, well, as Glenn stated, we're one of the few communities that are moving forward. I mean, if you look at all the new buildings, I, I drove around one evening just counting all the new uh, homes that's been built since I moved here in, in <coughs> January 94. And after you get to write it down, it's amazing what the growth of this is. And then I go back to my hometown, which is about 60 miles from here, and it's just the opposite. I mean, a lot of houses are gone. You know, the, the beautiful homes of when uh, we were younger, 20 years ago, before we moved to this community, were beautiful homes. You know, it's like, man, that's the home I want. But those homes are kind of starting to fall in a little bit of disrepair. The community's changing. You know, it's, 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 it's downsizing. And we're, I just feel we're here so fortunate as a community to be moving forward with all the new growth. And it takes us all working together, inside the three mile, outside. You know, it, we, we've got to work it together. And I think the, uh, the planning commission has spent numerous hours. And I, I commend them on the time that they spent, not only for the, the uh, comprehensive plan and the, and the three mile, but just the, all the other things that they deal with, uh, with, with that deals with everything within the city. And it, it's a, uh, takes a lot of time and commitment to those people. I, I provided a demographic report on that growth. Uh, the report that you got is limited to only a couple of years. They said that the student population in the city of Lloyd is growing, which would be an indication that the community is growing in size because the schools are getting bigger. But if you do a 22-year trend line analysis on that, it's declining population. The last couple of years it has come up, but over the last 22 years it is declining. So we have a grain population. That's why our services are going up. That's why the hospital is growing, Hilltop, and all these communities that have the older population because they're coming to town and they are providing the service for these older people. But as for replacement value, if you look at the birth death rate, it is a decline negative number where we have more deaths than we do have births in this community, which basically shows you you're not going to have the population of the student. The community is not going to grow based on that. And on top of that, when you look at these manufacturing companies and service jobs they have, they're basically low-paying salary jobs. Sunflower, you might have a welder making $10, $12 an hour, maybe $14, if he's good. Uh, but he's not going to be able to afford a $120,000, $150,000 $150, home to move into. So I can't see where the growth is coming from on that. In fact, based on the population of the county and the city, if you look at it over the last hundred years, it's declining. It's, just, it's a steady decline. Now, when you have a steady decline, you ought to be basing your, your judgments and your decisions on a declining population and, and adjust accordingly to conserve your resources and the husband your, uh, husband your money. Just, just keep it close and don't go out and spend a lot of money and, and project a decline in the population of growth. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. I'd mention a couple of things from the Planning Commission yeah. perspective, if you don't mind. But yeah, please do. Uh, as far as is trying to compromise and work with everybody on the outside of the outside of the city limits, uh, a lawyer, or attorney from the Farm Bureau and from the Kansas Livestock Association did have you know a list. Both of them had a list of things that they were concerned with uh, with the original plan and most of the modifications that we made were to try to address those and by the time we were done uh, modifying the original plan they they felt that it was a good plan for people in the ag community because of that um, as far as the demographic proje projections I think that those are very difficult to do and and we kind of trusted Hannah Keelan's knowledge and experience on on how to calculate those numbers I think there's a lot more that goes into it than just census data and they've had a lot of experience with that but a lot of the plans were were projected goals into the future and and trying to have a, an aggressive and an optimistic view on on growth for the city because I think that's the the goals that we need to set is is more progressive and more aggressive for growth instead of just sitting where we are because the cities it seems like that are happy with what they have and, and where they are are the ones that are declining so <coughs> That was kind of the, the point of view that we had on it. Hannah Keelan 
they said they supplied <coughs> the demographic data and their, their methodology on that. None of it was provided. I never did get to see any of it. They did have some student data population and that was it. I spent 25 years, got a master's degree in demographics and population analysis. I do statistical analysis. That was what my report is and that's what my conclusions came to. It's unbiased. If you want to look at the report, it's, uh, it's one page executive summary with maybe about another eight pages of statistical analysis breaking the data down for you if you really want to see the numbers and want to understand what's going on in the population. Well, no matter what's going on with the population, I think we have a progressive community and I think we need to keep it moving the direction we are. I think, uh, you know, when I talk to people uh, in economic development around the, the region, you know, I think they're amazed with what we're able to do here in Hawaii and what has happened. And, you know, that gets reported back to us uh, quite a bit through Heather and, and other people we ran into. And, and it's, it's like uh, we've got a lot of good things that we got to keep it moving. So, and I think that's a lot of things like that come with having a plan. And uh, that way we know where we're going. I, I okay. totally agree. Well, I, I think that's going to wrap it up this week. So we'll stand adjourned. Thank you. Actually, yeah, that's I'm going to